Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Down on the field with us, as usual, is the third member of our party. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten for this report. Adrian. Well, Ron, the Houston Cougar run and shoot is a potential touchdown every time, which is why for AM, the pressure is on to put the pressure on quarterback Jimmy Klingner. Now, last year, this unit beat up his brother. I mean, they sacked him or knocked him down a total of 40 times. Tonight, blitz in the middle, Mr. Marcus Buckley. Up for the Butkus Award, he could turn out to be as good as the old Bears linebacker himself. The point is, the intensity of that Aggie defense tonight could determine the outcome of this game. Okay, Adrian, as you look at R.C. Slocum, the head football coach at Texas A&M, his fourth year, a percentage winning of almost 80. His team won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Terry Benatulius out of Deer Park, which is nearby Houston here, will kick it off for the Texas Aggies. Donald Moffitt is the deep man for the University of Houston. We're underway on this Thursday evening. Gets by Moffitt and goes into the end zone, and the Cougars will scrimmage from their own 20. So... Let's meet the starting lineups brought to you by McDonald's. Jimmy Klingler, the quarterback, and of course the name is the same. His brother, the number one draft choice at Cincinnati this year. Jimmy from Houston, he's a sophomore. Wide receivers, they're all very, very good. Sherman Smith leads the nation. You can believe it, already has 73 catches. And up front, we normally wouldn't highlight a freshman. But Mike Gottfried, I think it is terribly important. Jim Herndon, they think, is going to be an awfully good one. But a redshirt freshman from Baytown. And tonight, he has an extremely big task as you look at John Jenkins on the sideline. spot him out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Let's meet the starters on defense for the Texas Aggies tonight. The down three Lance Tackleman probably the best way to put it a blue collar worker but he works extremely hard. They moved him from defensive end to inside at nose guard. Better push there. The linebackers may be as good as any group in the nation but Marcus Buckley all everything out of Fort Worth Eastern Hills and in the secondary Patrick Bates number 29 very very big for a safety at 6'4 225 and he's only a junior as you look at the defensive coordinator for the Texas Aggies running play straight ahead with Lamar Smith and Houston will be short of the first down as Sam Adams will step up to make the hit. Well, Ron Houston starts out with a run and shoot, and they're trying to spread Texas A&M out entire football field, and now they're going to go with the no huddle. No, they're back to the huddle now. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, is a nightmare prepared for the run and shoot offense. Well, obviously, someone does not care for that camera on the sideline there. Jump offside. Let's see if they were drawn offside. Eric England crossed the neutral zone. Bob Davey told me last night, Ron, when you prepare for the run and shoot, you have to play at one play at a time because there's no down and distance tendencies. There's if you're ahead or behind, it doesn't make a difference. Field position. So one play at a time is how he's uh, commanded his players to play it. There's no foul. No foul. Number 92, Eric England jumps. I, I'm not sure why there is not a foul. But it also looked like the left tackle, Jim Herndon, moved just when the defensive lineman came across England at him. Roger, the referee in tonight's ballgame. Smith has five, still weaves his way down the sideline and knocked out of bounds across the 35. Marcus Buckley defensively. Well, when you play the run and shoot, you have to be cautious that all week you practice your football team to pass rush, but the running game can hurt you. Here's a little trap play where they just are able to pick up the first down. R.C. Slocum knows his team has to be under control in the pass rush. Jimmy Klingler, as you look
look at the numbers on him, 2,305. 20 touchdowns, which is very, very impressive, but the number that I'm sure he's not impressed with is the 15 intercepts this year. I don't know what he's doing on the snap count, but he just got the Aggies again as Sam Adams jumped across. Freddie Gilbert couldn't hold on to the football. Mike, it has to be something to cadence. Well, it is, but all week you practice on getting to the quarterback, and you see it from the start of the ball game how anxious they are to jump the line of scrimmage. All week they've heard, rush the passer, rush the passer, rush the passer. The only thing is you have to wait till the ball snap. Sam Adams, 95. Ray Mickens, a redshirt freshman out of El Paso, Andrus, will check into the lineup as the nickelback for the Yankees with the first down and five. throw by Jimmy Klingler. It was. It was on the money. When you see the sideline, John Jenkins, first of all, signals the play to his quarterback. His quarterback then gives it to the inside receiver, number 21. Sherman Smith, then Sherman Smith gets it out to the outside receivers. That's how they communicate their play calling to the sideline. Second down. Sets the middle screen and has it complete. Smith Inside the 45 and is pushed out of bounds at the 44. And Lamar Smith, a junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Haran, I'll tell you, it, it's interesting. Let me telestrate this. How, as you watch the signal back here, he's just going to sit in here and let the rush come up the field after Jimmy Klingler. Watch Lamar Smith just sit down now. A pass rush taking advantage of the pass rush of Texas A&M for the big game. Well, so far, Houston has not been greedy. Just bits and pieces, but that last play, good for 16 yards. Ron, as we're looking at it, it looks like Houston's going to go to a no back set. John Jenkins told me there's one thing better than four receivers. That's five receivers. <laughs> and the Aggies want to talk about it. So a timeout on the field, we'll take it with them. No score, we're early. McDonald's knows that in today's economy, taking a family to dinner is harder than ever. But now the Big Mac Extra Value Meal is only $2.99. And the Hamburger Happy Meal is value priced. So at McDonald's, it's easy to feed any size family. Well, Mother, this is really something. Was it all worth it? A meal like this for only $2.99? You bet. <laughs> You're something else, Mother. What you want is what you get. McDonald's tonight. Mid-sized Dodge Dakota with an optional 230 horsepower Magnum V8 outpowers, outhauls, and just plain out pulls even full-size 5-liter V8s from Ford and Chevy. Unquote. Dodge, the most powerful line of trucks anywhere. Get $500 cash back on new Dodge Dakotas. What makes a mountain man a mountain man? Let's find out. Must a mountain man be a big burly guy with an axe? A man of steel? Hmm. Must a mountain man even be a man? Actually, the only requirement is the right beer. Smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and learn what makes the typical mountain man anything but. ESPN's presentation of Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by the New Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. And by Smooth Bush Beer, an easy drinking Bush Light. Now that's a really pretty shot of South Houston, in fact, the medical center area. You used to live over there? Not, no. <laughs> Far west of there, not at the medical center. <laughs> well, near the medical center, not right at. Winger with no backs, pressure is on, and was it a catch? It's very low. He's still looking, and we have no, now they say incomplete. Keith Jack 
looked around as we looked around and the officials finally gave a signal of no completion. Brown has talked about a nightmare for Bob Davey. When you have to prepare for the run and shoot, in seven days it's difficult, but he has the short week. You see Keith Jack, number four, I think it's a pretty good call. Uh, it's a, call it's a good down. call. It, it was off the, the turf. But it's very difficult to prepare for this offense in a short week. Seventh play of this drive coming up, Mike. And you're right, seven, <laughs> seven days is normally needed, but the short week, it can really hang you out to dry in some situations. Again, no backs. They zing it out there in the pass. is Moffitt, the junior out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, makes the reception. Ron, they have to get the ball to Donald Moffitt tonight, number 19. John Jenkins said he's a, just a player that's coming along each week. He's a fast receiver, good hands. He makes things happen. You know, that part of the Mississippi Gulf Coast has produced a lot of good football players uh, over the years. Uh, the, the quarterback down of Florida. Shane Matthews. Shane Matthews is from that general area. Off, incomplete. Marcus Buckley, number nine, who is the main player that Houston has to block tonight. Because of the quick outside rush, he's 6'4, 230 pounds, but really can rush the passer. Mike, it's fourth down, and Cody Avance will come in to punt for the Cougars. Derek Frazier drops off in a single safety, but the line of scrimmage at only the 40. A&M looks for him to try to pooch it out of bounds. No score, 12.56 left in his opening quarter. He pooches it. This is a good one. Frazier calls for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 10-yard line. So let's take a break. A&M about to go on offense. We have no score. State Farm presents the rules of the game. Today we're talking about dead ball fouls. In this play, the runner is obviously out of bounds when his teammate is contacted late by an opponent. Is this a foul? Mark and Rennie and little Lindsay are a young family just starting out. They don't have a lot of money for life insurance. I'm their State Farm agent, Gaylord Mooseman. Instead of giving Mark and Rennie a big life insurance sales talk, I did a lot of listening. And we came up with a plan that's gonna work for their budget and little Lindsay's future too. State Farm agents are good listeners because we want you to have life insurance you can live with. State Farm sells life insurance. Today we're talking about dead ball fouls. In this play, the runner is clearly out of bounds and the play is over. The action by the defensive player is a foul. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Suppose you wanted to make a chair as stable as can be. Where would you put the legs? Right at the corners, right? Now, suppose you wanted to make a car as stable as can be. Where would you put the wheels? Right. That's why the new Intrepid is so remarkably stable. The wheels are pushed out toward the corners. The further we pushed, the more stable and sure-footed it became. Intrepid, this changes everything. Alabama's undefeated Crimson Tide fights to keep their national title hopes alive when they hunt down Mississippi State, Saturday on ESPN. Reveille saying, hey guys, let's get some offense going here. Let's show them number four. Reveille, five to be exact. So let's meet the Aggies on offense tonight. A freshman who was playing high school ball this time last year from Deer Park, Texas, Corey Pullock, and he has given them a spark. Offensively, as far as the receivers are concerned, here's the big play guy, number three, Tony Harrison, his longest touchdown, a 73-yarder this year. A good offensive line, a senior by the name of John Ellisor, at right guard is the leader of that group. Very steady player, John Ellisor, out of Kingwood, Texas, just north of Houston. And 
let's meet the starters on defense for the Houston Cougars. Stephen Dixon, he's only a walk-on, but they think he's played well enough that he'll be offered a scholarship during the offseason. And the guy who just made the hit, an active group of linebackers, Ryan McCoy. He leads the team in tackles, and he has been a starter ever since uh, a freshman. He's a junior. And in the secondary, Stephen Harris, number three in the nation in interceptions. He has six. Third down and two for the Aggies. Close to the first down, but I don't know, is Eric Harrison. Sophomore out of Fort Worth steps up and makes the hit on him. Pretty good start by the Houston defense. They want to try to force everything inside on the running game. Not going to allow Texas A&M to get outside with their speed. I think that Houston also with the problems that they have had as far as injuries and what have you, a defensive tackle, kind of look for the Aggies to bang it out tonight and tackle the tackle. These are the defensive starters out for the year. Kevin LeBay, knee surgery, defensive end. Uh, Ty Davis, knee surgery, strong safety. Uh, Stephen Clark with a broken leg, and he probably was the best one of the group. And they're playing with some other Knicks, but uh, it is that time of the season where you, you just got to go. You got to be there for the muster. Tries to get outside. Ventress will catch him and knock him down for a loss. Miguel Ventress, a senior from Port Arthur, transferred from LSU. Ron, that's the entire philosophy tonight of Houston. They know that that uh, Texas A&M has speed with Greg Hill, so they're going to try to force the issue. Nigel Ventress, number 49, up the field, takes on the block of the fullback, number 32, Doug Carter, but does not allow Greg Hill outside. Like it's a loss of a couple, it'll be second down and 12. Miguel Ventress, 6'1", 235. Pressure from the outside. Bullock gets his pass away and incomplete, and you can see his arm was hit. He wanted to go deep, I believe, for Harrison. We talk about freshman mistakes sometimes early in the ballgame. Corey Pollock really gives Texas A&M a new dimension throwing the football, but he really makes a mistake here. Pretty good play-action pass, slips down, and just tosses the ball. Should have been intercepted. Good pressure by Nahalen Johnson, the Brady. He looks at a third down and 12. No score to 19 left to play in this opening quarter. Cougars bringing everybody. Flag is down. Pass is complete to Harrison. Now let's come back and check the marker at the line of scrimmage. Procedure against A&M. Wipe out the 18-yard game. Ron, you're looking at Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, and when you're coaching the team that's ranked number three in the country, you have all the pressure on your shoulders. On the sideline, Houston, they have zero pressure tonight. So they'll do third down again, and now the line to make uh, still the 31-yard line, but they will snap this one from way back at the 14. There's some kind of shovel draw or screen out of Texas A&M. Oh, look at the shotgun. Pass is complete, and he will have the first down. That's Brian Mitchell. needed 17 and they got 18. Texas A&M moved Corey Pulling back in the shotgun to give him a little bit more time and a better view. All five receivers out. Brian Mitchell, number 18, over the middle against the two deep coverage. Open, high throw, brings it in, picks up the first down. Mike, look who's playing. Dexter Wesley has had a shoulder separation. The junior from Rockdale, they didn't know if he'd be able to go tonight, and they have him in the ballgame right now. That's such an important position, that left tackle spot. Pass complete to Matthews, and he'll take it to the 40. 
Corey Pulling looks over the defensive front and sees that he has pretty good coverage one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Ryan Matthews. So that's the signal for the quick game, just a quick hitch. He's going to throw this one right in your living room. The pass to 81, Ryan Matthews for the quick game. You can see 42, Eric Blanc, the senior from Memphis. Coming on the blitz, the outside backer. And as Mike said, this a short drop and a quick throw. And the Breaks it for five, six, and seven yards. He's out to the 48, and it's first down Aggies as Steve Harris and Jerome Williams combine on the stop. Well, Greg Hill's your, your traditional type running back where he's a blue collar running back, but he just slashes at you the whole ball game. 5'11, 206 pounds, follows the block of Doug Carter, number 32, for the first down. Carter is like your fullback at Nebraska, like your fullback at SC has had over the years that you don't hear a lot from, but really earns his scholarship with his blocking ability. Hill, by the way, is playing with a bruised sternum. Take that one for three, and for the first time tonight, they're in Houston territory. When you look at Texas A&M's game plan, it's simple again: run the football, establish the run. Where they'll pick up some big plays, the better that they can run the football. It's just look here. Here's a trick play right here, the gate play. No huddle. Ball goes back. Hill hit behind the line, breaks one tackle, and now a flag is down at the 49-yard line. This swing and gate. You can't ever take your eyes off the field. <laughs> they tried to catch him on the swing gate. They were just a little bit too slow. Sometimes when a defense is a little slow getting out of the huddle, you see Houston moving slow. Now you come up, Corey Pulling just snaps the ball to number 27, Greg Hill, and they're off and running. But pretty good job by Stephen Dixon, number 63, of reading that play. Bob Toledo says, well, there's one of my trick plays in the can. <laughs> We have an illegal formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Ron, you meet with the officials before the game, and they always ask you, you have any trick plays? And R.C. Slocum sure drew it up on the board, told him these are the three trick plays we're going to use, and, and they must have not have been lined up right away, although R.C. thinks he was. I'll tell you a story just a little bit. Uh, I heard him talking with the supervisor of officials this afternoon about that same kind of thing. Swing the pass out to Carter, too high. What he was talking about, he was asking the question about they like to bring that fullback forward and turn him around quickly at the line of scrimmage, let the line come through and throw the quick screen. Talking about Houston now. Uh, right. No, uh, Texas A&M. Okay, okay. And he was talking about what constitutes, because you can't interfere in that area, but what constitutes holding? In other words, can you come up and blast him? He said they've had it happen a couple of times. And it had gone both ways. One time was called as holding. Another time the guy was tackled and nothing was gone. He was just trying to get the ruling whether it was holding or could you just go ahead and blast it. Pullick rolls it to the open side of the field. Going to go long and wrong pattern, wrong pass. One of the two is Harris was the closest man to it. Matthews is who he wanted. I think Ryan Matthews blew the, uh, the route. Now, Ryan, Darryl Red, number 60, is coming in the long stop. A Tondo Pro guy. Scott, he told me that he snaps the ball under a second, 0.63. He says most of the pro snappers snap it at 0.70 to 0.80. He's much quicker than the pro guys at snapping the ball back to the punter. So let's watch how fast this ball gets back. David Davis, one of the best in the country. As you look at Jamie Mouton, also one of the better ones in the country, number four in the NCAA. Aggie special teams are extremely good this year. Well, you're right. That thing was there in a, in a second. Davis's kick, good high coverage kick. And Mouton fumbles the ball, and but he called for the fair catch at the 13-yard line. So it's a 39-yard punt. Let's take a break. Still no score. 7:33 left opening quarter. Hi, folks. At Liberty Dayton Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep Eagle in Liberty, Texas. 
We're in the middle of our October sellathon, and we've got everything discounted, even our Grand Cherokees. Are you tired of looking all over East Texas and not finding any? We got them, and a lot of them. So what do you do? Pick up the phone, dial 1-800-833-8841, and let's talk your terms. Take Highway 90 to the 146 bypass in Liberty. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. I never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. In your face. 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 When the stars come out, ESPN is... In your face. The Giants battle the Broncos Sunday night at 8 Eastern. R.C. Slocum talking with a linesman across the way. And, Mike, I have to wonder if he's talking about the trick play, the number of people, or this play right here. I think he's talking about the trick play, although you see a, a hit that borders on being late by Eric Blunt, the outside linebacker. Corey Pulley wishes he was arguing about that. <laughs> he took the hit. Good look at that huge group of offensive linemen for the Houston Cougars. You see 76, Jim Herndon, they really like him. He is a redshirt freshman out of Baytown. And Jim, what a perfect size at 6'8", 295 pounds. My kids just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and still they're at him. They, they, they think he may be their best for ever offensive lineman. There we go again, almost an offside. Klingler pumps it once. Drills it almost intercepted, and let's go down to the sideline and Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Well, Ron, looking over the shoulders of the defensive bets here on the AM side. Now, they think they got their game plan going. They're going to keep coming with the hot blitz. By all means, don't give up the big play. They're going to show some man and zone coverage. The whole point is to keep Houston guessing, keep them confused, because those receivers are not committing themselves or making their decisions on their routes until after the snap of the ball. Bob Davey just doesn't want to give up the big play. Make them work the length of the field to score. Mike, not necessarily in this ballgame, but he's playing more zone this year anyway than the Aggies have played. You're right. You're exactly right, Ron. Playing three of seven, and now he wants to call the timeout. Well, be sure to join us at 11.30 Eastern Time for College Game Day this Saturday here on ESPN. All the inside stories and information that you'll need to get ready for your football Saturday. Then at 7 o'clock, it's the Residence in College Scoreboard. And at 7.30, CFA Primetime. This is where Mike Adrian and myself will be in Starkville, Mississippi. Number two, Alabama against number 16, Mississippi State. That is 7.30 Eastern Time. Another full day of enjoyment. And I'm really anxious to see that one right there, Mike. Ron, I watched Alabama practice, watch some tape on them, and I'll tell you one thing, they're legit. They're a solid football team. Gene Stallings and staff have done an outstanding job of that team. I, I mentioned Alabama, and the first thing that comes out of everybody's mouth, if they're a scout or a coach's defense, you talk about how salty that group is. They may be the best defense uh, in the country. When you look at them, they've only allowed one touchdown when a team took over the football on their own side of the 50 this year. Defense. You see the numbers on Klingler last week against SMU. Klingler with the 25-second clock ran out, and I can promise you nothing will disturb a coaching staff. The delay of the game on the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. You just took a timeout, you had a conference, and then you get a delay of game. And if you see a little steam coming off John's head, you can understand why. Well, you see John Jenkins, the head coach, he's giving the signal into Jimmy Klingler, the quarterback. Now he's trying to get Phillips. the message no, no, around no, to people. Smith. But yet, 
they lined up in the wrong formation, and that's what caused the 25-second delay. It was 26, Lamar Smith. Now they get him situated right. This is the reason. A little shovel pass is a semi-reverse. And Moffitt, the man that Mike was talking about, that the Cougars need to get the football to, and that's who they were shoveling the ball to. Well, this is where the Aggies rank nationally, number seven in pass efficiency, eighth scoring defense, number 12 in total defense. Don't know how much longer they're going to be able to hand, hang on to this defensive coordinator. He will probably be a head coach real soon, Bob Davey. Well, he's an awfully good one. And now a timeout taken by Texas A&M. So, in a game, it's got to stop and start, stop and start. We have another stop. <laughs> So let's take a break. 6.47 left opening quarter. We'll be back to the Astrodome after this. Every war has a price. But after 10 years of fighting this one, the bodies are still piling up, losing the battle. If it's important to you, you'll find it in time. At BASF, we don't make the skates. We make them ride smoother. We don't make the shampoo. We make it gentler. We don't make the music. We make it clearer. We don't make the surfboard. We make it stronger. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fram keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard, American or import, it's an extra lease on life. Welcome back to the Astrodome, and here is a true reverse. <laughs> We're not looking at the offense. <laughs> uh, Michael, you might take us a little further in explanation of why those defensive players are looking away from the field. I have no idea. I thought you were going to give us so well, I'll, I'll give you a story about a high school team one time looked the other way because they were getting murdered on the field. I don't know why these guys are looking the other way. They're watching it on the monitor, I would assume. There are four big monitors here in the Astrodome. Clinton steps up into the pocket, avoids disaster once, and then throws it complete at the 30-yard line. And that has to be what is so frustrating when you're trying to defend the run and shoot. Ron, the only thing I can think of is this, is this bench as they're looking back up. They're probably having a conversation. Hey, there's Lori. My, there's my teacher. There's uh, there's my <laughs> no, parents. There, there is a monitor up there. Oh, Trust yeah, me. Yeah, they're looking, but they're looking at their friends. Let's see what they're looking at. Unbelievable. First and ten. The line of scrimmage is the 27. Finally makes the tackle, but a huge piece of real estate to a total of 27 yards by Lamar Smith. Lamar Smith, number 26, on just a straight dive play, but because you spread them out, you reduce the defensive front. Now Patrick Bates, number 29, has to keep that ball in front of him. He's able to make the tackle. People say that Lamar Smith is a lot like Robert Newhouse, the former great who played here. Smith had 159 yards against Texas, had 110 against TCU. Klingler sends it incomplete. Ron Peters is the man that he wanted. 
Ron Patrick Bates, number 29. His job tonight is the free safety. 6'4", 225 pounds, a junior. He has to get the secondary lined up. You see him get the defensive call from the sideline. It's important because of the different formations and how Houston spreads them out that he release, relays the information of where to line up. that should have been caught that time it was Daniel Adams. The Cougars have had about four balls that should have been grabbed off tonight. Ron, you're correct. They're wide open. They're just not making the reception. As they come off the football, they will read the coverage. The play is called, but they have different assignments depending on what the secondary uh, accomplishes in coverage. So John Jenkins' offense reads the football on the move. Houston will go to a shotgun. That was movement by Houston as Texas A&M came up trying to show blitz. Bob Davies sitting over there saying, I'm just not going to get picked apart here. I'm going to try to come after him and try to get some sacks for my defense. There's no foul. No foul. That's the second one's kind of unusual. Maybe Adrian can give us some kind of word on the two no foul calls. No harm, no foul. Well, after this play, we'll show you a down the line shot as the Cougars go quickly this time. Get a complete to Sherman Smith, and he is belted out of bounds at the 36 yard line by Derek Frazier. And that will be enough for another Cougar first down. Ron, you have to watch the Houston receivers really to appreciate they have to block, not just catch the football. Sherman Smith catches this football, but all the other receivers are blocking downfield right away. See the receivers? There's the blocking. They're blocking downfield immediately. First and 10, Houston. 23 left in this opening quarter. Slip screen from Atkinson. Spins off one tackler, and Adams will be stopped by Frazier. You can see Jason Atkinson flying through as the defense read the play well, but he couldn't uh, wrap him up and bring him down. Ron, the Texas A&M coach, Bob Davey, told me that against Texas, a lot of man coverage that Houston threw for about 350 yards on those screen plays, and they've worked very diligently this week to stop the screen passes to the wide receivers. Texas was up 28 to nothing and it had to come from behind to win. Complete again. This time it's Freddie Gilbert as they spread the wealth. They throw it all over. Gilbert had 43 catches coming into the game. We said Sherman Smith had 73. Ron, you might be sitting at home wondering, people might be wondering if you can block, but the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. The other wide receivers can block right now. Ball was thrown to Freddie Gilbert behind the line of scrimmage. The other two receivers just turned inside and were blocking on linebackers. And the one tough thing on the receivers in that situation is when you're behind the line of scrimmage, the defense can come across and take your head off. That's not interference, right? Looks like now there should be a foul here because the left guard <laughs> moved. Now, let, me, let me explain this one. Tell you one thing, we're having more conferences here than uh, than what? I don't know. I can't even think of anything to say. We have a dead ball foul. False start. Against the outcome. Down the Still a third down. Well, the Yankees will like that call. John Jenkins will not. He'd rather have a no call. No foul. You know, one of the things to understand about the run and shoot, which Mike can explain to us as the evening goes on. Many people think that the receivers are reading when they come to the line of scrimmage looking at the defense. Not so. They don't start their read until the ball is snapped. Pre-snap read, but when that ball is snapped, they come off the line of scrimmage. They're looking at the coverage because that changes their route. Winkler in the air has got a man open. Oh, my goodness, another drop ball, and this time it's Sherman Smith. He was turning around, but he had both hands on the football. Boy, Jimmy has had some tough luck tonight. 
the play is an all-go switch. Now watch these two players are going to switch their assignments. See how they cross number 21 on the outside is just running the streak route. Ball's a little high, but he still should have made that catch. Sherman Smith, number 21. So Avance comes on to punt. in the punt, nothing on the return. Well, don't miss it. Coming up Sunday, live at 12.30 Eastern Time. The Hooters 500 for the Atlanta Motor Speedway. The last chance to see the king, Richard Petty Race. NASCAR's all-time winningest driver, and by far its most popular performer. He is retiring after Sunday. Race will also decide the $1.3 million Winston Cup Championship. And following the race, there will be a one-hour special presentation on the career of Richard Petty. It all begins 12.30 Eastern Time this Sunday, right here on ESPN. Yeah. Hill wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Ryan McCoy he picks up his third individual tackle in this opening quarter. And we still have not gone under four minutes. And we have been playing almost 45 minutes. Ron, you mentioned earlier that the strength of the Houston defense is the linebackers. Number 44, Ryan McCoy. He's taking it easy, reading the play, steps up inside to make the tackle on Greg Hill. Let's look at Ryan, a junior from Beaumont. As we mentioned, the leading tackle on the team has been a starter since a freshman. He's a junior. Bullock as they roll the pocket, try to get him on the corner, throws it from Green. That's Carter, his fullback. He will have the Yankee first down at the 31. McCoy is there to make the stop. He can't defend this any better than Houston defends this play. Eric Blunt, number 42, was right on Doug Carter, number 32. The ball was just thrown perfectly. Here's Eric Blunt on the coverage of the fullback. Sees him slip out of the backfield. Look at his coverage. Just doesn't make the play. Doug Carter with the reception and a good game. Also give credit to Pulling. Talk about putting it directly to the spot he did. Hill, the left side, has five, six, and now is going to be mauled down at the 39. Mike, that's now in a distribution for AM. Eight runs against six passes. Well, Ron, when you have Corey Pulling and you bring him into the game and you start a freshman, that's what he brings to the table, a passing game that they've lacked at Texas A&M for the previous ball games, but he is really an accurate passer. I'll tell you, the situation runs a great parallel to what has happened up at Nebraska with a change in quarterbacks with Tommy Frazier. We'll talk more about that as he goes down. Play clock is down to three, down to two, and he gets it away. He sings it. Nice defensive play as Matthews turned around, and it was just snapped down by John W. Brown. That's a good play. Ron, you're talking about Tommy Frazier, and if you're a football team, you want to be like basketball teams as you come on toward the end of the season in the tournament time. You want to get better. Nebraska might be the team that's on the biggest rise right now with Tommy Frazier. Corey Pollock here with just a corner route that he's going to try to get in. John W. Brown, number 25 on the coverage, and knocks the ball away. Interesting that uh, R.C. said this afternoon virtually the same thing that Tom Osborne said last weekend about what the spark with the offense and what it had done for the entire team. Zings it, has it complete to Matthews, and a deep, deep flag at the 50-yard line comes in. That's Harris defensively. Well, the Cougars are applauding, and there's the reason. Offensive pass interference, so erase the nine-yard completion. Compliment to Corey Pulling was given by Eric Blunt, number 42, the linebacker practice yesterday. He said, he reminds me of Bucky Richardson. Now, that's a pretty good reminder, because I like Bucky Richardson. I know you did, too. 
good solid quarterback, running quarterback, but also throw the football but a winner. They lose it down two rounds. That's so. right with the offensive foul. David Davis back in punt formation at the 10, and Mouton is the deep man for Houston. No score, 209 left in this opening quarter. Some the pressure up the middle, and this one's off the side of his foot as he had to hurry. And now takes a Houston bounce, and uh, the Aggies will down it at the 49-yard line. That's only a 27-yard kick. talking about Bucky Richardson uh, we'll show you some shots from earlier this afternoon there's Bucky Richardson right there he's the number three quarterback for the Houston Oilers as they worked out this afternoon here in the dome doesn't surprise me he made an NFL team he's a winner almost picked up you can see Aaron Glenn who has five interceptions already for the Aggies cut in front. Now you have to consider that as possible pass interference. Uh, Aaron Glenn is a junior college transfer from Navarro. Walked on the campus and became a starter. No, I think he came around the side. Aaron Glenn, defensive Trent, uh, has good quickness and uh, good speed as a secondary uh, defender. Well, I know that he has really been an impact player for them. Straight ahead with the running play. Lamar Smith and the carry. And it's Junior White, number five. He's a sophomore out of AM Consolidated who makes the stop. And there's Bucky Richardson on the sideline as uh, he has gone away from his practice field and down watching his uh, his Aggies play here this evening. Bob Toledo said he had a linebacker's mentality at quarterback. We have illegal motion against the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat second half. Jimmy Klingler, and if you watched his brother play at all in college, particularly with the head gear on, it's, it's almost spooky how much he and David look alike. John Jenkins said that he most definitely simulates Jim Kelly as a quarterback more than his brother. Let's go down to the sideline to get this update from Adrian Carson. Adrian? Well, Ron, a matchup that's a lot of fun to watch here early on. AM free safety Patrick Bates and Houston receiver Freddie Gilbert. Now, these guys are going head-to-head. -head. Both of these guys transferred from UCLA. They're recruited at the same time by Terry Donahue, talking about not being able to know your competition any better. Here are guys who have gone against each other in practice first couple of years in college out of UCLA. Now they're playing against each other. Third down. Lamar Smith breaks it back at the 30. Inside the 25, and he's down to the 23. Bates on the stop. It's a little fullback screen that Jimmy Klingler decides to shuffle this time. Fullback's going to just stand there. Lineman downfield blocking right away. Lamar Smith just steps over, waits. There's the little shovel pass on the screen. Picks up nice yardage. Nice Jim. indeed, Mike. 33 yards on that shovel pass. Going for the end zone. Ronnie caught him in man coverage. But I'll tell you what.
adjusting to the football. He made a great adjustment to the football. You know, it's interesting. Four, uh, four drops tonight on Klinger. He did Freddie turned around and makes an outstanding grab on that one. Kraft with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. There's sirens going off all over this place. Freddie Gilbert, number 16. Jimmy Klingler, little pressure, now puts the ball up. Look at the adjustment that Freddie Gilbert makes to the football and bends back to make that catch. Ray Mickens had him covered about as well as you could without getting pass interference. And here is the reaction by Jimmy Klingler. Freddie Gilbert, his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Do you hear sirens all over this place? It's a Houston. <laughs> They score, I guess they light those sirens up. So the, they forced the poor punt by Texas A&M, and they take advantage. Four plays, 49 yards, they only used a minute and six seconds. Ron, when you score a touchdown like that, you just put a little bit more pressure on that Texas A&M sideline because Houston can make their season with a win here against the number three ranked team in the country. Let's go down to the sideline to get a report from Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Well, Ron, Coach Gottfried mentions all those sirens. Those are air raid sirens. Now, you see a lot of coaches with their own line of, you know, clothing and shirts and pants. Well, here in Houston, they got their own caps. Now, here's the run-and-shoot Cougars. Take a look at the back side of this. Air raid, air raid. Death from above. Stay in your homes if this is not a drill. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Adrian. This is not a drill. <laughs> Oh, I, I think Bob Davy will, will attest to that <laughs> You're right exactly now. Exactly right. They know that's not a drill. Billy Mitchell. Speaking of flying, out to the 27, now the 28 yard line. Well, coming up on Sunday evening at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, ESPN's tour of the NFL takes you to Mile High Stadium in Denver. That's the Giants coming to town to take on the Broncos. The Giants pounded the Packers last week, and they have now won their last three to push their record to five and four. And the Broncos, well, John Elway is always tough at home. They're six and three. Don't miss all the action, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Sunday. Giants and the Broncos. Seven to nothing, our score. 44 seconds left in this opening quarter. Eric Harrison steps up to make the tackle on Greg Hill. And Mike, as we're about to close out this first quarter, I have a feeling that the thing that R.C. Slocum is really wanting to happen far better than it is, and that is to get that running game going so the passing can be effective. Ronnie might have to start with the passing game, the play-action passing game. There's a, there's a void zone right behind the linebackers in front of the safeties on play-action. Total yardage very lopsided right now with the... Uh, with Houston's favor. Pass. Still no signal. They're going to spot it down. Complete at the 37-yard line. And that is the end of the opening quarter. So let's take a break. Houston with a 7-0 lead over the undefeated Texas Aggies. We'll be right back. Dodge Dakota Sport with an optional 180 horsepower Magnum V6 out accelerates Ford and Chevy compacts and does it for under 10 grand. Unquote. Dodge, the most powerful line of trucks anywhere. Get $500 cash back on new Dodge Dakotas. Oh, darling, I need you so. Never gonna let you go. Capture the ones you love without missing out on the fun yourself with a Sony Handycam, America's most quarter. It's the same thing every Saturday. He puts on those old blue jeans and goes out with that old dog, and he's gone all day. He says he's going to bring back dinner, but all he ever brings back is that old dog. Here's to old dogs, Saturday mornings, and comfortable blue jeans. 
Wrangler. It seems that most car rental companies go out of their way to confuse you with unpredictable rates. They're all over the place. Thrifty, on the other hand, never veers off course. To keep your rates low, we've always kept our costs low. You can use this credit card for Montgomery Ward car rental at participating Thrifty locations and at the Auto Express in Montgomery Ward. When it's your money, always call Thrifty. Make it clear. Make it color. Make it both. The Desk Jet 550C. With Desk Jet printers from Hewlett Packard, it's easy to make it happen. To me, boxing's simple. Hit him, hit him again, knock him out, and leave. Now I'm going to fight Evander Holyfield. I'm bigger than he is, I'm younger than he is, and I can knock him out with either hand. On November 13th, there's going to be a new heavyweight champion me. Really? Budweiser presents Holyfield versus Bo, heavyweight championship. November 13th, the Mirage, Las Vegas. To see it live on pay-per-view, call your cable company now. Welcome back to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. Adrian Karsten, give us an update. We, we jokingly talk about these kids on the sideline, but there's a, there, there is a screen they're looking at. In fact, after the play, we'll, we'll get the report. Rodney Thomas comes in the ball game for the Aggies at tailback. Boy, he is a tough one. He's playing with a bruised shoulder, but he gets the first down plus about five yards. And now let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Well, Ron, I'm looking the way that the rest of this team is looking, looking to a sea of people, but look up here. This is also what they're looking at. Now, this is something that Coach Jack Pardee started here back when he was coaching about six or seven years ago as a coaching technique. They can sit here, look at, as they are looking at me now, look at the monitor, also look at the, the grease boarders outlining schemes. Ask one of the players why they're looking this way, and you know what he said? I'm trying to find Ron Franklin. <laughs> well, the other thing, Ron, is they have, they have a good teaching time when you have their whole attention looking away from the field. They're not going to look at a long run or a long pass, so Coach can diagram plays with a little bit more, uh, uh, as they look at him, uh, paying a little bit more attention. Plus, the fact it's a home game and so many are dressed, it's hard to see yeah, in the sideline. Ball foul. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. They go on the road on uh, There's no screen in the corners. They're not going to see the game. Well, this, this uh, really says a lot as far as that 7 to nothing lead by the Houston Cougars. Six yards per try on first down. The Aggies 3.1. Greg Hill hit in the backfield, and that's Terrence Mouton. Freshman out of San Antonio, Texas, number 57, who makes the hit. You know what I expected to see a little bit more of out of Texas A&M tonight, and it, the game's early, and we may see it as we move along, is the option play, because you have Corey Pollock, who's also can run the football. He's shown, he has shown that he can throw the football, but he's an option quarterback also. So look forward to uh, A&M running some option here soon. Brian Mitchell at the bottom of the screen. Tony Harrison up at the top. Pullock runs up into the pocket, and again, it's Terrence Mouton as the first man there to hit him for the Houston Cougars. There's one thing that just keeps coming to my mind, is when you have the third-ranked team in the country, you keep talking on the sideline, upset, 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 and your players just keep seem to keep pulling together. Look at the pressure here by Terrence Mouton, number 57, 63. Steven Dixon on the tackle, and uh, the longer this game goes, the longer that, uh, the more pressure that goes on that Texas A&M sideline. Well, that goes without saying. You see the WW on the back of every Houston Cougars headgear. That, of course, for Wilson Whitley, the Lombardi Award winning lineman who died of a heart attack uh, about two and a half weeks ago. Screen pass. They set it to Hill. Will be hit and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. And now a late flag way back at the 20-yard line. Mike, is that rough in the pass or it's where it was thrown? That is it. 
and a huge defensive stand by the Cougars is going to be wasted here on a penalty. We may come back to this call because uh, we'll see what happens with AM with the football, but Eric Harrison, number 62, with a big mistake. We have roughing a passer against the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. We'll, we'll come back. Let's log this play, Ron, and see what, whether this turns in to a touchdown turning point. And I keep saying that Texas A&M's ranked third in the country. They're third in my book. Fourth they overall. Are, they are number four overall. Right. Right you are, Mike. We need to put an asterisk by this penalty because it would have been a third down and about 14 yards for the first down. But it rolls it. Deep curl and has it complete. That is Brian Mitchell down at the 35-yard line. I mentioned Wilson Whitley just a moment ago, the WW on the back of all the, the Houston Cougars headgears. He played here under Bill Yeoman, 73 through 76. Was an All-American candidate and in 1976 won the Lombardi Award trophy. Uh, at the age of 37, uh, died of a heart attack. And he was really loved and well-respected in this community. He was living in Atlanta at the time. And so to send a special message to everybody their feelings. That's the reason for the innocence. Carter on the carry down to the 31. Good teams take advantage of mistakes. Texas A&M now are allowed to keep their drive moving. Doug Carter with a good gain and that looked like the start of an option play. Harrison goes to the sideline. Second down and six in the line to make is just inside the 26-yard line. If you just joined us, it is Houston 7, a and nothing. As we're about to go to 11 minutes left until halftime. Hill tripped up at the line of scrimmage. It's Harrison and Terrence Mouton who are there to make the stop. You talk about baseball, the dog days of summer are when they get to August and September, and the same thing is true of football. When you get to your last four weeks, you have to work fundamentals in practice. Texas A&M, I watched Houston practice yesterday. They worked a lot on fundamentals. Eric Harrison making the play run number 62. Hill, 10 carries now for 29 yards. Shovel pass to Hill. Oh my goodness, what a stick, but I still think he's going to have the first down. Miguel Ventress really put a hit on him. I mean, just chilled him. And let's see where they're going to spot it down, if they're going to put it at the 25, and that should be enough for the AM first down. AM stretching the linebackers. A little shovel draw, then they run at them. Play action pass behind them. Corey Pulley stepping back, sets up the shovel draw. Look how much that opens inside for the first down. Pulley on this drive is three of three. Bumaruski is there. Yep, they got Bumaruski the going. Tyler Harrison will score. could pull out a trick play with Tyler Harrison, number 55. So the Texas Aggies with Aruski, one of three married players on the team, Tyler Harrison, a junior from Arlington, 6'4", 275, takes it 25 yards for the touchdown. His first. Terry Benatulius with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. 10.06 left until halftime, and we are tied. On November 13th, Budweiser will make the world rumble, rattle, and roll when two of the most devastating powers on Earth collide. Evander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, 
live on pay-per-view from the Mirage, only one will walk away the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Brought to you by the King of Beers. You probably think the best American car value is some little econo box you have to settle for, right? Nope. It's a Buick. The luxurious Buick Park Avenue. That's according to the Complete Car Cost Guide. They calculated a five-year cost of depreciation, financing, insurance, fuel, maintenance, and repairs, and found that Park Avenue is the best American car value. For a free reprint from the Complete Car Cost Guide, call 1-800-FOR-A-BUICK. From precious metals to fashion colors, Cross Writing Instruments are the perfect gift for everyone on your Christmas list. From your favorite uncle to the kid who delivers the paper. And if you buy any four cross pens or pencils before December 31st, we'll send you a medalist ballpoint pen as our gift. Which could come in handy. Cross, the perfect gift since 1846. I got one more race to go, the Hooters 500, Sunday on ESPN. I'm really going to enjoy this one. ESPN's presentation of Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Cross Fine Writing Instruments, the perfect gift for everyone on your list. The Reveille with a, a bark for Tyler Harrison, the big offensive lineman who just took it 25 yards on the Ruski and scores the touchdown. Seven. Donald Moffitt. Boy, does he get swarmed under. Looks like that trick play now. Number 55 is going to take the football and break to the right side. 67 is going to leave him. Tyler Harrison, the center just snaps the ball and leaves it on the ground. Tyler Harrison, number 55, then picks the football up. Jason Matthews, number 67, leads him to the end zone. And you know what now, they're going to talk to him about is his ball-carrying technique. Now, here's what makes the play. The quarterback, Corey Pullett, with a good play action fit to the defense. Pearson has come to the ball game at setback, replacing Lamar Smith. And that's who they throw. Two ball is tipped, and Atkinson right there to bump him out of bounds. So even if he had caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Sam Adams with pressure. It's amazing how a big play can now inspire your defensive football team also and inspire the sidelines. Mike, you know, also where they are at this end of the field, the Aggies have a huge contingent here down in that end zone, and it's even noisier down there, so that would be advantage Texas A&M, I would think. did the same thing he did on the pass down the sideline. He turned his body and started his jump about a couple of steps too quick. And it looks as though he's shaken up a little bit. He got turned around. That's the 21st pass by Houston. They have run the football three times, so they're going to have to run a draw or a trap to keep Texas A&M honest. We'll get a report as soon as we can on Sherman Smith, the leading Receiver in the nation had 73 coming into tonight's ball game. Twenty-five second clock ran out, and that is the end of the stadium. That's where I was talking about. The Aggie players are beckoning their fans to make even more noise. See, that's right behind them. This is this contingent of Aggie alums is the largest of any university, I think, in the world, right here in Houston, Texas. And they are out to see their football team tonight. Jimmy Klingler needs a completion. He needs the first down to get gain some momentum back for his football team. They've been stunned. 
There have been ten penalties in this football game, eight on the offensive units. Going to go long, and it is caught by Ron Peters. 55 yards. Houston needed this play in the worst way. Ron Peters, both outside receivers in the run-and-shoot offense, will be the receivers that usually go deep down the field. Jimmy Klinger buys some time. Throws the ball downfield. Now, Ron Peters adjusts to the football. Aaron Glenn does not. Ron Peters comes back, leaps, makes the reception. Well, the underthrown pass, how many times do you see it where advantage goes to receiver? When you're on an island defensively, uh, it's a tough, uh, tough call. concern is Patrick Bates, the free safety, took the bait, came up inside, and he's, he made the mistake, and Jimmy Klingler threw the football right on the money. Here's the fake. They think it's a shovel draw. There's the fake. Now he hides the football. Keith Jack, number four, is behind. Patrick Bates will come into your screen. Bates is coming out of the ball game. He got beat on that play badly. Lamar Smith to the right side. Touchdown, Houston. <laughs> One question for you, Ron. What's that siren doing to that dog down there? I don't imagine Reveille like, I know R.C. Slocum doesn't like it because that only sounds when Houston scores. Mike, we still have 8.46 left in the second quarter. Jimmy Klingler's already thrown for 200 yards, 12-23. Kick is good. Let's take one more look at Lamar Smith, the junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, as he takes it off the right side. It's a 14 to 7 ball game. We'll be right back. We've had Old Blaze for 16 years. I mean, this Old Blaze. My husband uses it for all of his hunting and fishing trips. He and the dog absolutely love that car. Someday, when even AC Delta parts can't keep it going. We'll just park it out back so he and the dog can sit in it and reminisce. AC Delco Parts. It's like buying time. Thank you. To all of you attracted by Buick's reputation for quality, but who think a new Buick is beyond your means, may I make the following suggestion? Go see the new Buick Skylark Custom. It is every bit a quality Buick. And as the most affordable Buick for 1993, it makes Buick quality more attractive than ever. I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them? I can tell you exactly how that feels. Well, some of Adrian's tickets here in the uh, Astrodome tonight. As Houston has gone on top 14 to 7 in this one. And quite a surprise over the number four team in the nation. Ron, first of all, when you see fans like that, they're not true fans because it's 72 degrees in here. You can take your shirt off. Go outside in the cold in Ohio State or Penn State. 
We'll talk about strike quick. That last drive only took one minute and 20 seconds. And the first drive we told you was only 106. You can strike very quickly with the run and shoot. Tonight's Army student of the game is Houston's number 41. That man right there, Chris Pesman, who just made the strike on the special teams. He's an economics major with an average of 2.72, also very active in the Houston community. He has worked with Toys for Tots, Shoes for the Homeless, St. Thomas Presbyterian Church Food Drive, and other things. And there is the hit that he made. Our student of the game brought to you by the Army, and our congratulations to Chris Pesman just knocked him out of his shoes. Rodney Thomas at the 30 and the stiff arm and he takes it for two more. Gain of 12. Mike, now this youngster is playing with a very badly bruised shoulder and they didn't want to really use him that much tonight but he's in the ball game. He had one of those units on it today that kind of massages the shoulder or any part of the body that's injured. Well, when you play the whole season with two tailbacks, you just get accustomed to it. Greg Hill's probably a little winded right now. Rodney Thomas comes in with fresh legs, just like the Nebraska Weebacks. Thomas, two carries for 19. Harder, the pullback. He'll be wrapped up in the line of scrimmage. Harrison and Steven Dixon, the two defensive tackles. Fourteen to seven. Houston surprising the Texas Aggies with seven minutes and fifty seconds left until halftime. You look at Greg Hill on the sideline. And just as the Weebacks at Nebraska, there's an understanding between these two young men as far as give and take and the amount of playing time. Play action by Pulling. Again, the deep curl, they run it and they have it complete to Matthews. Now they say incomplete at the 45. The Aggies have now run that about four times in this first half where they drive that wide receiver really hard and then bring him back at a deep curve. Well, they'll continue that, and then they'll take him deep. There's Melvin Robertson, the defensive coordinator. In 1955, Bear Bryant was running a 4-3 type defense at Texas A&M, but he had the outside backers on the line of scrimmage. Melvin was coaching at Sweetwater Texas High School, and he moved the linebackers back and kind of invented the 4-3 defense. Wrote a book on it later, winning with a 4-3 defense. Shotgun formation, pull it, ball is tipped in the by Texas A&M at the 39. 26 yards. makes the grab he was right on the spot he had the presence of mind not to give up on the play Corey pulling is to throw the ball shorter up the field now the ball is deflected but Tony Harrison was continuing on his route he didn't give up on the play and that created the catch off the hands of Brian Mitchell Thomas reverses his field and almost has another first down Newhouse, one of the first men there, along with Eric Blunt, number 42, the senior from Memphis, to make the stop. So in case you joined us late, here is the storyline, and this one so far from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas A&M Pullock, 86 yards, 7 of 13, Harrison, 25-yard touchdown run. That's Tyler Harrison, that's right, the left guard. He scored the touch, and Klingler, 200 yards already. TDs on the, the last two possessions by Houston. Thomas running tough. Inside the 30, he'll have the AM first down as Jerome Williams comes up to make the tackle. Well, you wouldn't think he has a sore shoulder. The way Rodney Thomas is running the football. Just a quick handoff, skates outside. 
Jerome Williams, number 17, will make the play. The right shoulder is the one that uh, he has injured, the one that's a little bit tender. Machine talking to Doug Carter as they come to the line of scrimmage. Pull it deep over the middle. It is almost intercepted, and now here comes a flag. That was Jerome Williams, who very nearly had the pickle. Well, I think there's going to be pass interference on Houston. It looked like their tight end was interfered with 86. Greg Short going down the middle of the field. Defensive holding Houston. Greg Short, the tight end, as he works up the football field, a little out and then up. And number 48, Michael Newhouse, <laughs> knows he's beaten, so just grab a hold. As it turns out, that might not be that bad a penalty because Short was going by himself toward the goalpost. The only problem is you have to go to the sidelines. <laughs> He'd rather stay on the football field. Michael Newhouse, a nephew of Robert Newhouse, the, the great one who played here and went on to star for the Dallas Cowboys. He was like a bowling ball. Well, okay, he was tough to bring up. And he is right down to our left here. He does color on the University of Houston radio broadcast. That's great. And he's with the eyes shut. Ball is fumbled and pulling gets back on the football. Ventress is the man with the hit. Now that Robertson's defensive scheme keep the ball inside. Nigel Ventress, number 49. See him get penetration there on the fullback, number 32, Doug Carter. Never gave Doug Carter a chance to block him. 32, Doug Carter, as he steps out the block, he's beaten on the block. Causes a fumble. Corey Pulling able to recover the football. Ventress just did it to perfection. Playing through the block and then really stuck the ball here. And second and 17, Pulling squares the shoulders, has it complete. Again, it's that curl play as they have it inside the 20-yard line. This time it's Ryan Matthews. Clock is now under five minutes until halftime. 14 to 7, the Houston Cougars leading over the Texas Aggies. And now, Mike, I'm sorry, I was going to say Melvin just keeps urging his defensive players. They're playing as well as they've played since early in the season before they had their injuries. The one thing that R.C. Slocum said today is he said, you know, they have been mistake prone, but he said they'll put it all together against us, and if they stop turning the ball over, they're going to be tough to handle. Bullock zings it, tip, and incomplete as two Houston Cougars ran together, Dixon and Harris. And I believe, Mike, if both had not gotten there at the same time, Harris might have come up with the pickle. You're exactly right. Lorenzo Dixon, 29, is going to say to Steve Harris, 23. Hey, I had that one. If you just would have stayed out of here. Corey Pulling, both defensive backs, Lorenzo Dixon and Steve Harris, read the eyes and just collide. They read the eyes of Corey Pulling and just collide in the interception attempt. Jerry Benatulius, he is from Deer Park, Texas. In fact, he was a teammate of Pulling's in high school. This will be a 35-yard attempt. The pass, plenty of distance, and he's got it. So let's take a timeout. 4:18 left until halftime. Our new score: 14 to 10. Cougars leading the Ags. I once caddied for the National Amateur. I'm Bill Newman. Anthony Newman? I'm Bill Newman. 27 different religious groups and denominations. Where does it begin? Where does it begin, the whole concept of peace? Joining together to celebrate the success of Fair TV Channel. A channel that allows no on-air solicitations and no single group to dominate. It fairly shares the views and opinions Archbishop. of all 27. Archbishop, would you pass the cheddar cheese, please? That the channel lasted even a day surprised many. I'm in love with Gabriella Sabatini. But with a little faith and some financial help from TCI, the Vision Channel 
is now catching on. Now, stop me if you've heard this one, if it, if it responds to any Jewish joke. Right. Not that it's always been easy. I heard it. <laughs> but we feel that it's always been worth it. Let me tell you the punchline. Let me tell you the punchline. Wait a minute, now these guys down here haven't heard it. Pittsburgh Penguins are picking up where they left off last season. Mario Lemieux leads the Penguins against the Red Wings Friday night at 7.30 Eastern live on ESPN National Hockey Night. Tonight on SportsCenter, baseball's expansion lists are leaked and Steve Howe is back in the game. The Shaq introduces his magic act to the Bullets and we'll go to Vegas for analysis and predictions on Friday's title bout. All coming up after the game. Back to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. 14 to 10, the University of Houston leading over the Texas Aggies. 4-18 left until halftime. But all of a sudden, this game now has gotten a flow to it, Mike. It kind of stuttered along in that first quarter. It really has. AM has, has settled down a little bit. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, concerned. I'm sure his stomach's doing flip-flops inside, trying to defend this run and shoot. Terry Vinatulius will kick it off for Texas A&M. That will go into the end zone. Sanders lets it go. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten and get this update from him. All right, Ron, with those flip-flops and Coach Davey's stomach, Coach mentions, may be reflected in a new defensive lineman. Now, he is demanding of his players greater pressure on Klingler. What may happen here now, it really results in one down lineman Six linebackers and four defensive backs. They're really going to crowd the front of the line, but have those guys in a two-point stance, get them off the ball faster in Klingler's face. Okay, we'll look for that. Adrian, this also goes along with what Mike Godfrey was talking about as far as the, we mentioned the flow being uh, far better than what it was. In the first eight possessions tonight of the game for both teams, four punts. Then the last four, there have been scores. Three touchdowns and a field goal. Leathered up. Just as the clock went to zero, got the playoff, and Lamar Smith will take that for a gain of 14 yards to the 34. Bates and Frazier defensively. Well, you try to time out the cadence of the quarterback, but I don't think they timed it out on this play. I think he was offside. You just get into a rhythm as a quarterback. You try not to, but sometimes you do. We have offside on the defense. Penalties declined. First down. Try to time up the blitz. Texas A&M with a move here defensively. Reggie Graham, 38, just didn't time it quite right. Very close. Smith, by the way, Mike, has five carries for 52 yards and one touchdown. Well, you have to credit the offensive line. We'll take a look at it because they've done a nice job of protecting their quarterback, Jimmy Kringle. Puts an air under this one, and it's complete as a marker comes down, and Freddie Gilbert, who is back from what looked as though a leg injury, makes the catch good for 21, and now let's check that flag. So that's one of the blocks downfield by the wide receivers they're being called for now because the ball was thrown downfield. So John Jenkins, the head coach. We have pass interference against the offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Loss of down. That's a tough penalty. But you talk about pass protecting. You have to pass protect five interior linemen blocking on four defensive linemen. So usually it's one on one. Now you have a hold on number 76, Jim Herndon at the top. He gets away with it, but pretty good protection for Jimmy Klingler. That's the seventh Houston penalty in this ball game. Goes up on top, and it is caught by Sherman Smith.
Jenkins had him covered step for step, and he still catches it for 40. Ron, you're, you're exactly right. So the credit goes to Jimmy Klingler. You can't cover him any better, but when you have your back turned to the football, Ray Mickens, now the ball's in the air. The other defensive players are yelling, but he does not react. And then he gave up on the play. Number 21, Sherman Smith picks up a key first down for Houston. We have pass interference against the defense. The penalty is declined on the completed pass. The yard is sufficient for a first down. First down. Tay, when you coach against this offense, it's a nightmare because it just takes, you look at total defense, what they've allowed for the season, 285. Tonight, 292 yards. Folks, we still have 320 left in this first half. will be hit and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It's Tackleman, the nose guard, along with Sam Adams. But but just like we're talking about, you can have a loss. You can lose six yards, and on second and third down, still pick it up because you're throwing the ball down the field. Shovel pass, Jimmy Klingler to, to Donald Moffitt, number 19, but Texas A&M will have none of this. you got to give a lot of credit to Tackleman and the job that he has done. His brother, Trey, played at Rice and was hired by Texas A&M to work in the weight room, and he worked long, hard hours during the offseason with his brother. And again, is right there in the middle of the play, number 58. That's one of the reasons they moved him inside rather than from that uh, outside defensive end position. Well, it was a good move by, by Texas A&M because he's doing a solid job tonight. Now you have third and long, and want to again make the point because of the vertical stretches that they use in their passing game that they'll throw the ball down the field. Clock is running. About to go under two minutes until halftime. Cougars leading by four. And then comes with the blitz. Pass. Incomplete. One, two, three flags. Jack, the intended receiver, and it was Aaron Glenn that just got turned completely around. Well, when you sell the farm and bring them all, you're in man coverage. I'm just not sure which way they're going to call this, though. the quarterback Jimmy Klingler is going to fake that shovel draw again now they've got a great call on here but Jimmy Klingler is able to get rid of the football now you've got Keith Jack number four against number 31 Aaron Glenn Aaron Glenn can't find the football again he gets turned around bumps the receiver Keith Jacks Keith Jack and there's the interception call the interference call Aaron Glenn, the junior college transfer, as Mike said, from uh, Navarro. He probably has been the biggest surprise of the, the secondary. Uh, he really has become an impact player. Right, because he wasn't involved in spring practice, so he just arrived at campus in August and was the starting uh, corner against Stanford. We have a correction. The pass was incomplete. We have defensive pass interference. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. They were going to give him the pro rule, where the interference that's, occurred. That, that's the rule you like, yeah. Oh, I love that rule. That should be in college football. You really are, uh, when you have this, that kind of rule, it really hurts the offense. 14 plays. Four-plus yards, five times. First round efficiency for the Cougars. Gonna go deep. Gilbert is the man that he wanted. Now that one was not a good example, but I was about to comment that for only a sophomore, Klingler has a really good idea of putting air under the football and letting a receiver run under it. Pretty well defended that time, but Jimmy Klingler didn't lead him. No, through it behind that was, him a little bit. No, that was 
that was not going to be a good example, but earlier uh, oh, he, he has done that he, nicely. He's been on the mark tonight. Option play. They pitch it back to Smith. And he is bumped out of bounds inside the 15 by Bates. Well, this Tuesday live, starting at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, ESPN brings you the Major League Baseball expansion draft. Florida Marlins and the Colorado Rockies will choose their teams. ESPN will be there to bring you every pick. That is this Tuesday live at 2 o'clock right here on ESPN. possession and Klingler did exactly what I was talking about Mike he just lofted it up there and let him run under it but he couldn't hold on Frazier with the cover on Daniel Adams cannot throw the football any better than this to Daniel Adams number two this is Houston's fade route into the corner of the end zone Daniel Adams just can't get his arms on the football pretty well defended this is the eighth play coming up. Second down of 10. Clock is stopped with a minute 40 until the halftime. 14 of 10. Houston leading. Running play. And Smith will be wrapped up by Reggie Graham. What a big play as the Cougars had been fooling AM from time to time with that running play and getting the big yardage, but that time nothing doing. All that play call is for John Jenkins is to tell the Texas AM defense every now and then we're going to try to trap you. But we're going to throw the football. John Jenkins asking for a timeout, and Houston will call it. Coming up at halftime, the halftime blitz, which is our regular programming on Thursday evening on CFA Primetime Thursday style. And also, Holyfield and Bo with the preview of, uh, of their upcoming fight tomorrow evening. Mike, you're a big fight fan. Who do you like in that one? I like Riddick Bowl to win that fight over Vander Hollifield. Hollifield came in extremely light. This week, 205 pounds. Well, speaking of light, I understand on the sideline, our compadre is standing by and has a report for us, Adrian Karsten. Well, Ron, when you mention run and shoot, everyone thinks primarily pass because that's your, your first choice in this offense. But remember, Chuck Witherspoon is playing here. He only became one of four backs in Southwest Conference history to rush for 1,000 yards three straight seasons. Now, you got to be thinking about this down in this neck of the woods inside the red zone. You know, Reggie Dubar to SMU, Chris Gilbert did it at Texas, and man, Trevor Cobb over at Rice just accomplished it last week. So, I mean, you talk about spreading them out. Yeah, pass first, but definitely run can get the job done for you. Third down and 11. We'll elaborate more on that uh, situation in just a moment, Adrian. Houston's 5 of 7, Ron, on third down. Defensively, he just wouldn't let him come back for it. Well, Aaron Glenn defends this one, but Aaron Glenn wants pass interference. He said, if you're going to call it on me, call it on Ron Peters, number 10. Jimmy Klinger lofting the ball to the corner of the end zone. Ron Peters will try to come over the top of Aaron Glenn, and I believe Aaron Glenn does have a complaint. Yeah, he had to turn to defensive back there to keep it from being picked off. This is Kraft to attempt a 32-yard field goal. at home. 106 left until halftime. As the air raid siren goes off again here at the Astrodome and our new score, the Cougars 17 and the Aggies 10. Well, be sure and join ESPN.
Holyfield Sports Center on Friday, November the 13th, for the live post-fight coverage of the Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bow title fight in Las Vegas. Live post-fight interviews and also uh, analysis by Charlie Steiner and ESPN boxing analyst Al Bernstein. That's on Sports Center at 11:30 Eastern Time tomorrow evening. Seventeen to ten. John Jenkins walks the sideline and congratulates his his offensive team as they lead right now in a surprising seven point margin over the number four ranked team undefeated Texas A&M. Mitchell and Bats, the two deep men for Texas A&M. Eleven plays, 66 yards, 312 used on the drive. takes it to the 34. Well, that's the 14th penalty of this football game. Ron R.C. Slocum's done a nice job at Texas A&M. Against the receiving Jackson. team on the return, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. I have a feeling that, that R.C. would love for this football team to step forward a little sooner. They are 9-0, and but Mike, six times this year, they have either trailed or won game. They were tied at least in the third, if not the fourth quarter, before they had to come back and win. I'm sure he would like for them to make it more definitive early. No doubt. It's Rodney Thomas who will take it to the, to the 23-yard line. Stephen Dixon defensively. Seconds now, 29. Draw play. There's, there's some real hitting going on down there as Mahala Johnson and Eric Harrison combine on the stop. And we are at halftime as it is down to five and now four. And the Cougar faithful are standing. They lead 17 to 10. They have total offense 303 yards against a number 12 ranked overall defense of Texas. It's halftime. Let's take a break. The Cougars by seven. The latest vehicle from GM has no moving parts. It uses no gas. It's made entirely of plastic that turns into steel. The new GM MasterCard. Every time you use it, GM will credit 5% of your purchase toward a new car or truck from GM. That could mean hundreds, even thousands of dollars in savings over and above any other discounts or rebates. And there's no annual fee. The GM card, the new financial vehicle. Goodbye, old Regal. Hello, new Regal. The 1993 Buick Regal sedan. This story isn't unusual. There's a real love affair between Buick owners and their automobiles. And the latest J.D. Power & Associates initial quality study ranks Regal sedan as the best car in its price class. The great American love story belongs to Buick. Over the years, I've made a lot of trips back and forth to Vegas. So how's it going this trip, George? The odometer was broken for over 50,000 miles. So I say we've got 300,000 miles on this car. Hi, George. I've had a longer relationship with this car than I've had with any woman. Hi, George. How are you? This beauty is a living example of what can be done with proper maintenance and AC Delco. Hi, George. AC Delco Parts. It's like buying.
NFL well. One of the last three teams with perfect records behind by a touchdown at halftime. Chris Fowler along with Lee Corso and Craig James. If you didn't know the team in white was number three in the country and the team in red was three and five, you'd swear it was reversed. Well, you look at Texas A&M, the strength of their football team is the running game and their offensive line is getting dominated right now in the trenches. They got to go in the locker room. Coaches have got to tell them, folks, we're coming out. Greg Hill, Rodney Thomas, Saddle up, fellas. We're going to run the ball about 10 straight times and get into some kind of groove as a running team. Craig, your old team, SMU, scored 41 points against this same Houston team last week. A&M needed a trick play to get their only touchdown. A&M's in trouble. In fact, no matter what they do the second half, Florida State leapfrogs A&M in the next week's polls. Even if they come back and win It doesn't make any difference. The way they look right now, forget it. This is a Houston team that gave up 132 That's in the right. last three games. A&M ranked a fourth, by the way, not third. Now, the big sports story tomorrow... The heavyweight championship fight between champion Evander Holyfield and challenger Riddick Bowe at the Mirage. Here now is boxing maven Charlie Siner with the preview. Chris, you're looking at the home of the running Rebs, where tomorrow night somebody may well be running for cover. Inside the Thomas and Mack Center, the site of the heavyweight championship of the world. And on the eve of the heavyweight championship, as is custom, we saw neither hide nor hair of the champion, Evander Holyfield, nor the challenger, Riddick Bowe. They were in their hotel rooms, respectively, taking it easy, getting their thoughts together. But late last night, or in fact, early this morning, apparently bored and nothing else to do, Evander Holyfield went, what else? Bowling. Been part of this sport than Carmen Salvino and Billy Waylu combined. I want to remind you, coming up on SportsCenter, right after the football game, the man who may well be champion in 1993, Lennox Lewis, lying in wait, waiting for a shot at the winner of tomorrow night's fight. Speaking of tomorrow night's fight, immediately after it's over, join us here live on SportsCenter. We'll have all the interviews and the analysis. Chris? Thank you, Charlie. We heard Mike Godfrey pick Riddick Bowe. I like Holyfield to go the distance. What about you guys? I like Evander, 11th round TKO. <laughs> I like the chiseled stone, Evander Holyfield. He goes the distance. Is that like TKO? TKO. What did I say, Tico? Okay, sorry. <laughs> All-purpose predicting here. All right, stay with us. We're going to come back. Required viewing for the college football fan. The halftime blitz. We'll look at some off-the-field news. Also, some on-the-field tidbits that will help you that'll help you predict what might happen in Saturday's ballgames. Don't go away. If atomic particles had been square instead of round, it probably wouldn't have happened. If it had been a wet cell instead of a dry cell, it's doubtful. And if the positive terminal had been negative, who knows? There might never have been a battery called Energizer or the Energizer Bunny. But luckily, everything happened just right. At Radio Shack, there's more to the name. Top electronics, computers and games. More products and service than ever before. It's all from America's technology store. The best in America, Radio Shack. Nobody compares to Radio Shack. Names you can trust, products you know. Big Mac and a Diet Coke, please. Get the extra value meal. It's only $2.99, plus you get fries. We'll just have some of yours. No, no, I order fries because I want fries. They're mine, not yours. If you want fries with dinner, get your own. McDonald's Big Mac extra value meal for just $2.99. That's right, $2.99 for a delicious Big Mac, medium Coke classic, and, of course, a large order of our world-famous fries. Mom, could I have some of my fries? Thanks, honey. But I'll just have some of your father's. At McDonald's no. tonight. Welcome back to halftime. Well, a victory for Washington today. A three-member Pac-10 panel voted unanimously to recommend that the Huskies not forfeit any of the eight ball games that Billy Joe Hobart played in. The Pac-10 presidents and chancellors will make a final decision on the matter on Tuesday. The committee stated a belief that the game should be decided on the field and found no evidence that Washington knew about the $50,000 in loans that Hobart received. Hobart remains ineligible. Meanwhile, former Alabama captain Gene Jelks is claiming he was paid $2,000 by then-assistant coach Jerry Pullen, and he says he has a tape of conversations to prove it. In Atlanta John Constitution article, Jelks also claimed he received numerous illegal perks from boosters. The NCAA is looking into it. Now to some on-the-field news that will impact this Saturday's games. Our regular feature, the Halftime Blitz, starting with Steve Cyphers in the East Region. 
Thanks, Chris. Number one Miami follows an off week with a major mismatch against Temple in their final home game at the Orange Bowl, where the Hurricanes' 50-year seniors have seen 32 victories and zero defeats. Boston College is home to Syracuse, buried by Notre Dame last week. Tom Coughlin spent this week trying to convince his team it's still good, while quarterback Glenn Foley declared himself off-limits to the media. But to win, he has to be off-limits to the Orange Rush, because Syracuse saw what the Irish pressure did to the BC offense. Now, if SU scores the first touchdown early, and that's been their pattern, BC's in trouble because it keeps the Notre Dame nightmare alive, and they haven't had to rally to win any games this season. West Virginia goes to Rutgers trying to keep a bowl hope alive, but they've lost fullback Rodney Wooder to an ankle injury, so Adrian Morrell has to pick up the rushing load once again. Still, the outcome of this one rides on Brian Forte. Sometimes brilliant, sometimes bad. Forte can't afford more than one interception if Rutgers is to win. Now to the Southeast Beat with Chris Mortensen. Alabama at Mississippi State right here on ESPN Saturday night. Now, Mississippi State wide receivers are working more with the gloves this week for two reasons. They may spread out the offense and four and five receiver sets, but in a tight, controlled, short passing scheme run by quarterback Greg Plump. Second reason, game time temperatures may be near freezing Saturday night. Now, another note, under Jackie Sherrill at home, the Bulldogs are 5-0 in the SEC. South Carolina at Florida. Look for Florida to stick with the hot hand of quarterback Shane Matthews. He's thrown just three interceptions in their five-game winning streak. For South Carolina, they have a four-game winning streak. It's all defense. They make big plays when it counts, including the interception by cornerback Frank Adams in the last nine seconds a week ago. Georgia at Auburn. Now, Georgia's defense has dominated the Georgia offense in practice this week. Big reason for the five offensive line starters for Georgia are banged up. So running back Garrison Hurst is going to have to earn those yards against Auburn. For Auburn, they've been spurned on by tailback James Bostick, 217 pounds, 461 yards in his last three games. But the key here is the Auburn defense. It's ranked number four nationally, yet it has trouble on third down. So look for quarterback Eric Zyre of Georgia to try and exploit that. Now let's go to the Southwest beat with Ivan Mazel. Colorado goes to Kansas for a meeting of the victims of Nebraska abuse. The Buffs have won seven straight from the Jayhawks. Without injured fullback Monty Cousins, Kansas must depend more on the arm of quarterback Chip Hillary. But pass on CU? Cornerback Deion Figures has allowed only four completions in man coverage all year. Baylor at Rice. The Bears have won four of five. The Rice is four and two under quarterback Bert Emanuel and has beaten Baylor two of the last three years. Emanuel's rushing skill has taken a load off tailback Trevor Cobb. He's over 1,000 yards, yet 59 carries fresher than at this time a year ago. That freshness should make the difference. Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. What new wave Sooners? With Steve Collins at quarterback, Oklahoma ran it 65 times last week. Collins won't be a surprise to the Cowboys. He started against them last year. State's 4-0 at home this season, but 0-15 against the Sooners. With Reggie Barnes returning to linebacker for OU, that should be 0-16. Now out of the Midwest, and Gary Danielson. Penn State, Notre Dame, and a struggling Penn State heads into this game needing the big plays. Look for O.J. McDuffie to provide it. He needs only four receptions to become State's all-time leading receiver. For Notre Dame, it's power in their backfield. Three future number ones. We knew about Meyer and Bettis, but Reggie Brooks has emerged. He's leading the country with an 8.3 yards per attempt average should prove too much for Penn State. Ohio State and Indiana, and the key, the matchups and the offensive and defensive line. Indiana's defensive line has to provide some big plays like Lamar Mills have been giving them. He's got 13 tackles for loss and eight sacks. For Ohio State, it's their strength of their football team, and they're getting healthy. Corey Stringer and Dan Wilkinson will be back and healthy and should prove too much for IU. Finally, Illinois at Michigan. And for Illinois to have any chance, they must get this game into the fourth quarter with the ball in the hands of Jason Verdusco, who's been magnificent. Listen to these stats. 71% completions, five touchdowns, no interceptions. Will they do it? Don't think so. Michigan continues to roll. Derek Alexander takes up right where Desmond Howard left off last year. 14 touchdown passes. Doesn't let that defense move up to stop the run game. Now the West Beat and Mel Kuyper. Arizona at USC. The Trojans welcome both starting offensive guards back from the injury list. Expect their ground game to click for at least 125 yards. Larry Smith called Monday's practice one of the best they've had all year. Arizona won't be emotionally charged like last week. USC should prevail, shutting down the Wildcats' one-dimensional running attack. Washington State at Stanford. Expect a high-scoring shootout. The winning team in this series has scored 31 or more points in 10 of the last 11 games. For Stanford, the trend should continue. 
the suspect Cougar defense is allowing an average of 30 points per game against clubs with winning records. Hawaii at San Diego State. Marshall Falk still isn't 100%, bothered by a nagging hip injury that could flare up at any time. With defenses stacking the line of scrimmage, Al Luganville's club spent most of the week trying to improve their short, controlled passing game. When San Diego State jumps out to a lead, Hawaii lacks comeback ability. Chris? Thank you, Mel. Back to the no eyeglass look. Now, yeah. Bama, Mississippi State, two great defenses, but Bama, it seemed like this a &M team we're watching, that's been criticized for a lack of versatility on offense. Yeah, I really, I like Jay Barker's quarterback at Alabama. Too many people underestimate, coach included, the strength of <laughs> Alabama's offense. I think they're good enough now that they're a legitimate ball club. Alabama will go to Starkville, and they will beat Mississippi State, and I think they can beat them pretty good. I agree with you beating them, but not real good, because I tell you what, to beat Alabama, you need to throw the ball, and Mississippi State has a problem. Their quarterback, Greg Plump, threw more interceptions last week, three, than he did completions. You can see why they got problems. I like Alabama by one point. State is the mighty dog, but the defense needs to score, I think, two touchdowns <laughs> in this yeah. ball game. Now, Penn State and Notre Dame, the Irish are rolling, the Lions are reeling, and there's a payback motive here. Yeah, because Penn State beat Notre Dame 35-13 to last year, and what happens? Luke Dynamite when it comes to this. He's unbeaten. He's 5-0-1 when he plays a team that, he beat, that beat them last year in Notre Dame Stadium. So I like the Irish by seven points. Arizona and SC. Kuiper picks the Trojans. The Wildcats trying to upset a fifth Pac-10 team. Well, Arizona has got such a strong defense. USC needs to run reverses, traps, counters, everything that's misdirection. They got to do something to try to offset that aggressive Arizona defense. I just don't think that they can do it. I really believe that Arizona wins once again. They just keep making them underdogs and they keep winning. All right, we're going to come back here at halftime. A&M down by seven points to Houston. The only touchdown to the old Ruski, Tyler Harrison. Keep your eye on him. He's on the All-Presidents team. He's got the ball like a loaf of bread in the right hand. Rumbling for the end zone. He's going to get there, but it's the only Aggie touchdown so far. Hey, Warren, where do the stars come out on Sunday nights? In your face. 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 When the stars come out, ESPN is in your face. ESPN, Sunday night NFL. The Giants battle the Broncos, Sunday night at 8 Eastern. Alcoholism, it can tear a family apart. If someone in your family has a drinking problem, you can see what it's doing to them, but you may not see what it's doing to you. Fact is, you don't have to drink to suffer from alcoholism. In Al-Anon, people learn how to deal with the drinking of someone else, often someone close. For more information about Al-Anon or al call 727-6225 or 800-356-9996. Al-Anon, hope for families and friends of alcoholics. Distracted Rafael Carrasco of Colombia. What caught my eye the most was the tradition of the Fai Islamic Jama in the early 80s. But that was it all. That it had a very good business school and uh, they had the, it presented the opportunity to do internships with some of the best companies in the world. For Raphael, who wants an international marketing career, the University of Houston is a slam dunk. A degree from the University of Houston keeps you in the game. Tonight we focus on opportunity and achievement and the student athlete. The NCAA, which is composed of over 900 member institutions, makes rules and regulations to protect the interests of student athletes and the integrity of athletic competition. The NCAA is presidents, faculty members, athletic directors, and coaches at hundreds of campuses across the country. We are the NCAA. Saturday, sandwich between scoreboard shows that Alabama-Mississippi State game at 7.30 Eastern. We're back to Ron, Mike, and Adrian with AM down seven after this. From precious metals to fashion colors, Cross writing instruments are the perfect gift for everyone on your Christmas list. From your favorite uncle to the kid who delivers the paper. And if you buy any four Cross pens or pencils before December 31st, we'll send you a medalist ballpoint pen as our gift. Which could come in handy. Cross, the perfect gift since 1846. 
When David and Lisa Edmondson needed life insurance, they came to see me. I'm Kent Spearman, their State Farm agent. I help the Edmondsons put together a life insurance plan that works for them and their budget. And I stay in touch as their needs grow and change because that plan has to work for their children, Rachel and Travis, too. If you want life insurance that works for you, get an agent who works for you. Get yourself a State Farm agent. State Farm sells life insurance. Order your tickets today. You won't miss any of the hard-hitting action of Southwest Conference football. Hey, it's the perfect outlet. Well, we're at a halftime at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas with the Houston Cougars with a surprising 17 to 10 lead over the fourth ranked and undefeated Texas A&M Aggies. And uh, Mike Gottfried, when you look at what has happened in the first half, University of Houston has already got 303 total yards. The Aggies, 12th ranked nationally in defense, have only been given up 274 for a ball game. That, to me, is the first shocker. Well, I think it's, it's important, and I think there's two keys. First of all, Jimmy Klingler went into this game throwing 15 interceptions. A&M has not had one interception. They also haven't been able to get to him to sack him or hurry him. So A&M must put some pressure on Jimmy Klingler. As far as the giveaway takeaway ratio that has not been good for the University of Houston and as Mike said they've been turning the ball over five times a ball game. It was not the case in the first half. Here are a couple of plays that were key in that first 30 minutes. Keep your eye on the left guard Tyler Harrison number 55. The center is just going to put the ball on the ground number 55 Tyler Harrison picks the football up around the right side for the surprise touchdown. University of Houston vertically stretches a defense. Number 10, Ron Peters working down the field against coverage. Ball's going to be underthrown a little bit, but he has the advantage to come back, leap up, and make the catch. Back to the opening tonight. I hope you got to see it, that Mike Gottfried was down on the field to better explain the run and shoot as you look at the Aggies coming on camera. That's exactly what you said had to happen, and it was spread them out and keep them all over the field. That's exactly what Houston has done. So we'll take a break. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after this. Shopping for a new vehicle has gotten complicated in a lot of places, but not at Keating and Winnie. We were the first dealer in the area to offer one price shopping and our no hassle guarantee. Forget the sticker. We figured our very lowest price on each vehicle and put it right on the window. No games, no hassle, of course, folks have been buying from Keating and Winnie for over 35 years that way. Isn't it time you did? Keating and Winnie, your hassle-free, one-price dealer, just 30 minutes east of high pressure. Store manager, Steve Allen. Our prices at Brookshire Brothers are competitive, and we care about the needs of our customers. That's why we listen. I really like the way they treat their customers. They treat you like royalty. Brookshire Brothers is one of the best stores in this area. We drive up from across town to shop at Brookshire Brothers because the selection is larger and the people are friendly and the atmosphere is nice. Because pleasing you pleases us. At Brookshire Brothers, we have a smile in store for you. This football coach has a serious responsibility. Beyond the pressures of winning and losing games, the coach has a primary commitment to his players. The coach realizes that while you got to be ready for the next game, the real winners are those who graduate from college prepared for another field. America wins with college football. Seventeen to ten, our surprising halftime score, and let's go down to Adrian Karsten, who is visiting with A&M head coach R.C. Slocum. Adrian. All right, Ron, thanks very much. Coach Slocum, what did you tell your team at halftime? What's got you down by a touchdown here? What do you have to do in the second half now? Well, the great thing right now, we've been in this situation a bunch of times this year. Uh, we've given up some plays that we should not have given up. Uh, I've been disappointed the way we've played defensively. Told them we've given them a lot of things. I think if we can settle down on defense, 
We can make some plays on offense. We can get back in the ball game. All right. What do you have to do offensively now to get these guys charged up and win this game in the second half? Well, it'd be nice to start this third quarter and come out and take the ball now and get back in the game, get the lead. But we've got some plays I think we can make. Got to play better on defense. Sirens are blowing. Ron, back to you, sir. Okay, Adrian, thank you very much. And uh, R.C. Slocum, you know, very matter of fact that uh, his ball club, he's disappointed with the way they have played defense. And the fact that the Cougars have really kept the pressure on and have not made errors, that's probably the biggest thing. This is Banks. And he'll take it out across the 30. And now here comes a late flag in from downfield. Boy, this has been a heavily penalized ball game. 15 penalties, Mike. So it's holding against Texas A&M, and rather than starting out across their own 30-yard line, they'll be further back downfield. Let's take a look at the stats in the first half. When you look at the pass yardage by Houston, average yards per play, 8.4. But to me, the key is that they haven't turned the ball over by way of interceptions. Well, I know that David Klingler probably is watching this uh, football game tonight up in Cincinnati. And David, your little brother has already got 235 yards passing, and that is more yards than Big Brother had last year in the entire ball game against Texas A&M. Straight ahead with a running play, that's Stephen Dixon, number 63, one of the first men to step up and hit Greg Hill. When you look at this ball game, the first half, the Houston offense set the tempo. The Texas A&M offense has to set the tempo in the second half. They have to have, as R.C. Slocum was talking about, long drives, big plays, but they have to produce more on the field offensively. They haven't set the tempo. Second down and eight for the Aggies. the U of H 42 yard line 36 yards and now Harrison is shaken up the first five minutes of the second half is very important for Texas A&M to get their offense in gear Corey Pulley number four with the post route to Tony Harrison right on the money Jerome Williams number 17 makes the play Eight out of 14 for Corey Bullock in the first half. 14 out of 28 for Jimmy Klingler. That's a pretty good way to start it with a 36-yard strike. Your first reception in the second half. This could be halfback pass. Hill does throw it and almost intercepted. That was Alan Aldridge who was making the pressure on Greg Hill. Rodney Thomas is the one who has the phenomenal numbers. He's three of three. All three, uh, what? Well, one touchdown. I beg your pardon. Throw it. Little trick play in there off the toss sweep, but they really haven't established a toss sweep. It's the pitch back to Greg Hill. He's showing pass right away. You'd like to have the ball carry carried a little bit longer before he tips off the pass. Second down and 10. Option down the line of scrimmage. Pull it gets away. Aldridge in pursuit now. Be hit and knocked down back at the line of scrimmage, Jerome Williams, number 17. It's a long way to run for that little bit of yardage, but he saved the sack. He saved the loss yardage. Down the line of scrimmage with the, with the option, which I thought I'd see a little bit sooner. Corey Pullick, Stephen Dixon, first to make the play, 63. Then Allen Aldridge, number 96. Ron, the tight end, Greg Short, has been silent tonight. Corey Pullick has to find a way to get the ball, get the ball to his big 6'3", 253 pound junior tight end. And he is their leading receiver with 24 catches. Third down and nine. Pullick rolls the pocket, throws it complete. Matthews, and he is close. And I believe, yep, he's going to have the A&M first down. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten. 
Rod, Coach just mentioned they're having trouble establishing that toss sweep. Well, something I'm seeing here, Coach, by the Houston defensive ends, they're actually doing a 360. They're spinning inside as that tight end tries to hook them to keep those guys from getting outside so they can get up and turn the corner. It looks to me like uh, that's why they're having a little bit of success here stopping that toss sweep. Well, if you, if you come under the toss sweep, Melvin Robertson teaches that, you can make the play develop a lot quicker than it wants to sometimes. And if you get played by the outside linebacker, you're in pretty good shape. Hill, short yardage. You can see Ryan McCoy, number 44, also Stephen Dixon and Eric Harrison right there in the vicinity. The young man you were looking at defensively a moment ago, 96, Alan Aldridge. There's a good look at him. His father played right in here in the Astrodome. He played college football at Prairie View right up the road. But his father played for the Houston Oilers and also was a defensive end. Allen Sr., very good ball player, resides here in Houston now. Your wealth of knowledge never surprises me. <laughs> 17 to 10, Cougars on top. Just over 11 to play, third quarter. Pressure. Pulling. And he will be shoved out of bounds in the vicinity of the 20-yard line. Ryan McCoy, and you can see him having to put that jersey back on after almost being undressed. You know, pulling for a big kid at 6'3", uh, maneuvers pretty well. Well, he's a dimensional quarterback. He not only throws the football, but you see when he's chased out of the pocket, he becomes a running back. And Alan Aldridge, number 96, who you're talking about, chased him out of bounds. It's frustrating defensively when you feel like you're going to get a sack. And then Corey Pulling is able to scramble for a first down or close to it. See, they stretch it out, and it's a first down, A&M. You know, a lot of close relationships in this ball game. R.C. Slocum learning under Melvin Robertson as far as uh, defense. And Ben Hurt, who also coaches at the University of Houston, was R.C.'s high school football coach at Orange Stark over in uh, Southeast Texas. And you talk about all the good things of college football. Ben Hurt had a heart attack. John Jenkins has kept him on the staff. R.C. Slocum called the hospital five times while he was in the hospital. So we'll take a break. 11.35 left in this third quarter. Cougars by seven. Aggies are threatening. New skill Flexi Charge cordless tools all share the same battery pack. So when you need a recharge, they keep on working. The Flexi Charge interchangeable power system from skill. Trinitron XBR Squared. Hey, look! It's the Grand Canyon! It'll change the way you feel about everything you see from Sony. Make it clear. Make it colorful. Make it both. The Desk Jet 550C. With Desk Jet printers from Hewlett Packard, it's easy to make it happen. There we were, a jillion miles outside of the hood. The bus got a flat. Got no check. Homie's got to cut his grass. What the? Four and a half. 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 Sold. The man's round sells. But he's got no beef. Pardon me. That was there. Huh? Yo, MC Cow Seller. But fresh. ESPN's presentation of Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. For worldwide reservations, call 1-800-FOR-CARS. And by the Skill Flexi Charge Interchangeable Power System. The Astrodome in Houston, Texas, referred to right after its first completion uh, as the eighth wonder of the world built for 31 million dollars and interestingly enough Mike the first renovation on this building cost more than the original building because the first major renovation was 39 million 
Well, I brought in a new year here in 1988 with a loss. Now, that's not the way to bring in a new year to Texas in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Yeah, Tony Jones was not good to you that night, No, was he? he certainly was not. Eighth play of the drive. Intercepted. His arm got hit. Newhouse almost got it, but it was Eric Blunt who had the, the pressure on Pulling and caused the pass to come up short. Eric Blunt, the linebacker, number 42, is from Memphis, Tennessee. He was talked into coming to Houston by Jack Pardee, who said, I'm going to lose five linebackers and you can play here right away. Michael Newhouse just lets the interception go through his hands. Eric Blunt. Just grabbing a hold of Corey Pullock. Pullock's already had four stitches taken in his chin from the first half, and he took another good shot right there. You can see some of the blood in his jersey. Rodney Thomas inside the 20, and now it's going to be third down Texas A&M, and this is a really big one right here. You have to think play action pass here. Good play fake by Corey Pulling and trying to work on the linebackers. You see Bob Toledo to R.C. Slocum's right. They're looking across the field at the signals being given by Melvin Robertson. Both groups look like they're playing off the signals a little bit, trying to figure out the signals of both teams. This drive now four minutes and one second long, third and seven. Puts it up for the end zone. He's looking for his running back and incomplete. Thomas couldn't hold on. Eric Blunt with the cover. And again, Pulley got knocked down hard. Eric Blunt can play the run. Now he gets isolated on Rodney Thomas on a pass. Uses his left arm a little bit. He may have gotten away from face, mask, face masking there because he never turned around to the football, did he, Mike? He may have. <laughs> no That's ball identity. That's why the, the fans and the dog are barking. <laughs> Poor ball identification, as you recall. 35-yard attempt by Benetulius, who gets knocked down. The kick is good, and Houston has roughed the kicker. Does a and take the points off the board? What do they do? Another mistake by Houston. They have to take the points off. Second penalty that's led to a continuing drive. The first one that was major was back in the first half when a and wound up driving for their opening touchdown. It would have been a third down and 17, and they roughed the passer. They wound up with Tyler Harrison taking the ball on a Ruski going 25 yards for a touchdown. But that's how that drive was kept alive. Here they would have been confronted with a third down. We well, you know it's interesting because the three official points. made the first down signal. Personal foul. Roughing a kicker on the defense. Penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. There's the big thing right there. That's what R.C. Slocum was trying to make sure of, that it would be the first down. You watch the rush. And it's a Houston player that knocks number 25, John W. Brown, into the kicker. And now the people, the Houston fans, are seeing it on a replay on the screen above and really booing the call. Well, that was close. You're right. Just like what we saw at K-State last week. Well, he did rough it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So the first down, the automatic first down, and the Aggies will take the three points off the board. They will have a first down, and the ball will be spotted just inside the 10-yard line. So it is first and goal, Texas A&M. They trail by seven, 17 to 10. on the bottom of the stack. You can see 96 and 49 getting off. Hill now 13 carries for 29 yards, and he has really been held under his average tonight. Well, he has, and what continues to make that play 
is that Doug Carter, the fullback, never gets a chance to block Nigel Fentress. He's up the field right away, and he's making that play happen right away. take the field goal off the board, take the personal foul penalty, and score. Benatulius with the extra point, he's got it. We are tied at 17 apiece. 9.55 left in the third, and one more look at Greg Hill. Wesley with a good paving block. We'll be right back. Upon learning, Little Caesars is offering two pizzas for $5.99. The mind enters five stages. Shock, disbelief, confusion, denial, and finally, acceptance. Now let's watch the subject registering denial again in extreme slow motion. Two medium pizzas with cheese and pepperoni or your favorite topping, all for $5.99. It's a toozy doozy of a deal. Toozy doozy. And for a dollar more, crazy bread and crazy cheese. This is Pioneer Home Theater, with laser disc images 60% sharper than most VCRs. The world's leading AV receivers, speakers customized for home theater, and a big screen picture that's real as life. From the leaders in audio and video. Home theater so advanced, you don't just watch it. Seemed out of reach. It's Joe Amato and Autolite who punch it. The wall goes to 290. Connie Coletta and Autolite smash it. 300. The barrier. Kenny Bernstein and Autolite shatter it. Autolite and the record breakers. We feel pretty good about that. Alabama's undefeated Crimson Tide fights to keep their national title hopes alive when they hunt down Mississippi State, Saturday on ESPN. That's a good look at Doug Carter and Greg Hill with the headsets on as he's talking upstairs. That, by the way, is the 12th touchdown for Hill this year and his eighth consecutive game that he has scored a touch. Benatulius to kick it off. say they have the football. Still no signal from the officials. Houston football. You see Ryan Hurst and he is a member of the 12th man team as the ball comes loose. He's not a regular member of the football team and he is a part of the 12th man team. On the road they travel only one. At home they can use an entire team if they want. Muppet a little shaken up after that fray. Dexter Wesley, number 75. This is a little adjustment that Mike Sherman made, the offensive line coach for Texas a &M. Because the backers are working up the field so far, he pulled the tackle out on the toss play and opened it wide open. Dexter Wesley with that good block. Klingler wide open. Over the middle is Sherman Smith. Sherman still on his 